All right, guys, please make sure you check out our Joe Cole interview. Man, it was amazing. Myself, Rio and Steve, we had a great chat with the former West Ham, former Chelsea, former Liverpool and former Lille player. Absolutely fantastic stuff. He gave us so much insight. Make sure you check it out. Who was the biggest influence in terms of managers on your career, do you think? It's got to be, it's got to be Jose, really. Like, he, he, you know, he sort of lit a fire, I don't know, lit a fire inside of me that sort of, it went right. I need to start winning things because I got scared. I thought I'm not going to win nothing in my career. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this week's episode of The Five Insider. you got to hear myself, Joel Bayer, and the guy whom I love to talk to on a weekly basis, Mr. David Ornstein. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm uh, feeling a bit more calm after last week when the uh, Chelsea managerial changes, but, um, but we're ready to go. Let's do it. Good stuff. And I'll tell you what, man, loving your setup. Really cool. Um, we're <laughs> we gonna just have need to a graphic add, on the screen, right? We just need to add the graphic and we'll get that sorted anyway, man. It's feeling more homely on the five insider. <laughs> now, I want to get straight to it. Jude Bellingham. I've been hearing rumors. Oh, Jude, oh, he could be going Liverpool, he could be going Manchester United. First of all, I want to start off by saying what a performance that the young man put against Man City last night. I mean, absolutely brilliant. You could see he 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 reminds me of a I don't want to say Steven Gerrard in the sense because a little bit, you know, a little bit different, but that combative style is what mm. I like, you know. Um and I don't think I don't think I've seen it overall with a, with an English midfielder so much talent. Um, he's now scored the most as a teenager uh, in the UEFA Champions League, four goals. Uh, mm -hmm. The guy was absolutely brilliant yesterday. His header, he made it look easy, but it, it wasn't easy, you know. He's got both sides of his game. He can, he can do the dirty work, he can sit back, make tackles, bomb on, score goals, immense player. What's going on with him? Is he going to be going to England? Is he going to be staying in Germany? What are you hearing? Well, the first thing we need to point out is that this is a generational talent. He's a freak of nature in the best possible and most complimentary sense. And I don't want to heap too much pressure or expectation or scrutiny on him because he's a young boy and we need to give him time to develop and learn and find his feet uh, at what is going to be the top level for him, for club and country. We know that. But there will be highs and lows along the way. And he ought not to be burdened with the pressure that some of his uh, predecessors have. And we mentioned somebody like Steven Gerrard. You're right, a slightly different player. And you've got Frank Lampards and, and top English midfielders over the years, Paul Scholes, uh, Michael Carricks, etc. But I don't want to compare him to anyone because I think Jude Bellingham is really unique. Uh, he is capable of scoring like we saw last night. That instinct was like a poacher's finish. The sort that we might have seen from maybe a Lampard, he, he popped up in those areas. But then, you know, the way he's aggressive, he can go back as well and, and he can play that sort of defensive midfield role. Maybe that's more akin to Gerrard and, and even the way he drives through midfield and links play has got a bit of a Declan Rice in there. So I think he, he has a bit of all of those, but none of them are just like him because he is one of a kind. And I think he's going to mark himself out as one of the very best players that we're going to see in this generation. And I think it's important for us all to support him, understand the journey that he's going to be on. Very brave of him to uh, head over to Borussia Dortmund. And he's made such a brilliant impact there. And we've got a World Cup round the corner. And so eyeballs are going to be on him and many others Personally, I want to see him starting in that England midfield. I think he's got every attribute. I think he's such a high-level player with so much more to come as well. And the most impressive thing is that he seems a, a, an old head on young shoulders. Yeah. He seems to have the composure on the pitch when you uh, listen to his interviews as well. He's so eloquent and uh, speaks very thoughtfully. Um, he actually should have had that goal at the Etihad last season. Do you remember in the Champions yeah, League? Yeah. Uh, this season, he got it. Maybe a bit unfortunate to be on the losing team last night, but that should take nothing away from his performance. So come into your question, uh, he's going to be one of the most sought-after players in world football next summer. I think if he had been available for transfer from Borussia Dortmund and that he had wanted to go this summer, every top club would have been snapping 
at their feet for his services. Um, and you're looking at the likes of Real Madrid, of Liverpool, Manchester United tried to get in previously. Don't rule out the likes of Chelsea. And every club that I speak to at that high level, they love him. He would be their dream signing, but only one of them is going to get him at some point. Um, Borussia Dortmund, to my knowledge, don't have that release clause situation. Um, that they had with Erling Haaland and they have with others over the years. Co correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I don't remember reading or hearing about that. So it will come down to a natural conversation. You know, Dortmund don't tend to stand in the way of players' developments. We saw that with Jadon Sancho, when the time is right for them and if the offer is right for them. And so those are two big considerations. Is next summer going to be right? Well, when you... Uh, speak to people in Germany or you hear and read the commentary around Jude Bellingham, it seems the summer of 2023 is going to be the Jude Bellingham summer. That's the one where everybody's going to fight for him. And what's the value going to be? What are expectations are they going to set? And what club is going to be able to meet that? The front runners from a perspective of what we've heard and seen so far appear to be Real Madrid and Liverpool. Did Manchester United missed the boat last time when he was leaving Birmingham because it seems they tried hard, but he was determined to get to Dortmund. Um, wherever he ends up, I just can't wait to see the future for Jude Bellingham because I think he has absolutely everything at his disposal to be at the very top and for many years to come. And um, good luck to him. Um, I just want to add on to some of the stats that he showed yesterday. 100% yeah. take-ons completed, 50 touches four passes into the final um, third, uh, four ball recoveries, three clearances, two fouls, one shot, one goal. Now, mm. it's interesting. Sebastian Kell, who is the D Dortmund sporting director, said Dortmund must change their policy of letting young stars leave. Jude is very happy at the club. He's very committed to us, reported reported Kel uh, before the Manchester City game. So hopefully he can stay over next season for a very long time. And uh, so it's interesting. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens over at that side, if I'm honest with you. And I want to talk about someone else who had a fantastic performance yesterday and he's not going anywhere, thankfully. Um, mm -hmm. Another generational talent, you know, an absolute freak, uh, a hero. I call him a hero because he already is, man. Mr. Erlen mm -hmm. Haaland. Um, wow what performances we've seen this year and i wanted to ask does he have a clause in the city contract as well or because i've been hearing things here and there and i'm i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure like from the inside perspective they haven't made that mistake have they see well i don't think it would be a mistake if it is in there just to be clear I, I need to do some work on that because i don't know i saw the same reports as you did at the time he signed that there's a release clause that kicks in further down the line not sort of immediately um, and you never know with these things if they do exist what needs to happen for it to be activated um, mm. determined by the clubs that are interested in him the level of finance it reaches the amount of appearances or got I have no idea um, the intricacies of some of these mechanisms um, but if we're to sort of move away from whether there is one or isn't one for the time being because of course these things are meant to be in, in contracts. It happened with Jack Grealish confidential. So even if people are saying there is one, the people involved are always likely to deny it. And so we've had nothing sort of on the record about that or, or to my knowledge, even off the record. And, and we'll, we'll see on that one because it will be very interesting. But the point being that Erling Haaland had, you know, I don't think it's a, a secret, a, a bit of a desire to join Real Madrid. It was a bit of a, a dream of his. And that deal didn't come about last summer. Manchester City really were the front runners and prepared to pay the finance and set things up, ready for him to come in. There was a gap in their team with the departure of Sergio Aguero. And then Gabriel Jesus, of course, was pretty much lined up to join Arsenal. Whereas Real Madrid had Karim Benzema still there under contract and helping Real Madrid win another Champions League title. Um, but this theme of Erling Haaland and Real Madrid was, I remember, you know, very strong during the negotiations. And so whether there's an understanding on City's part that we won't stand in your way when the time is right further down the line. Um, and that was something that was reported at the time. 
one of the attractions to Erling Haaland and one of the ploys that City um, sort of played on was we understand that you could go there one day. And I hate the word stepping stone. Manchester City and many clubs are, are too elite for that. They, mm. It's a bit of derogatory sort of connotation, stepping stone. But there may be a maturity in this conversation that, yeah, if your dream is to join Real Madrid, we're not going to stop it from happening at one point in the future. The circumstances will be need, need to be right for us and you and, and who knows what the future will hold. But whether that's via a clause or just a verbal agreement, I've got no idea. And for the time being, they're not even going to be thinking about that because he has hit the ground running like we've rarely seen from anybody in Premier League or wider European football history. Um, he's a machine. He's a physical specimen. He's completely and utterly um, chiseled. Uh, he's got the stature, the eye for goal, the track record, the pedigree, the dedication, the understanding of where he needs to be, positional play. He's good in the air. Um, he scores goals with his feet. He strikes fear into opposition. We said Jude Bellingham, a, a freak of nature in a good way. And you rightly said that for... Erling Haaland as well. I mean, we've never really seen something like him. We said Jude Bellingham was unique. Well, so is this guy. He's not the Brazilian Ronaldo. He's, he's not, not a slash man, Ronaldo. even though there is Latin-esque features, but he's still him, you know? Yeah, there's Latin-esque features, but Zlatan was a little bit more get the ball into my feet, you know, work it, link yeah, play, yeah. score goals. And he could do the acrobatics. Yeah. But Erling Haaland is, is probably more dynamic than... Zlatan would have ever been in his career with no disrespect. They're just different players. Um, you know, the way he latched on to that, uh, I think his first goal from open play for Man City away to West Ham was just utterly ruthless. The guy makes football and goal scoring look easy. Mm. And uh, I just think he's a complete and utter uh, monster and I mean that in the most complimentary way. He's going to score goals like we possibly haven't seen if he, he stays fit. Because this ratio, if it's to continue, I think two or three goals a month will be easy and low for him. Uh -huh. Every month for a whole season, that's going to obliterate records. Uh -huh. And um, there's a lot of goodwill, like you say, you know, we, <laughs> unless you hate him and Manchester City. You know, yeah. You can it's only, hard not to like yeah, and appreciate him. Exactly. I mean, alongside with uh, Kevin De Bruyne, similar players where you love them regardless of who they play for. Um, yeah. I just wanted to roll out some of these stats. You know, he's now scored 26 yeah. goals in 21 appearances. So here it is, David. <laughs> he has scored every 60 minutes on average. And he's only failed to score against two teams, Mr. Ornstein. Ajax and, um, Ajax and Man City. Well, so that's when Man you include that. Last season and stuff. So, but since yeah. he's been at City, he scored 13 goals as a Man City player where he started a month ago. Like, uh, oh, it's, yeah, it's just and, crazy. And, and crucially, he was the missing piece in the jigsaw for Man City. He might not have been stereotypically their style, this intricate, yeah. creative player who can play across the front line like a false nine, tippy yeah. tappy midfielder who yeah. can convert into a forward. He's a bona fide centre forward. And mm -hmm. City had that through Sergio Aguero in a different style. They're Gabriel Jesus. Um, but they've not had someone like this. And yeah. with Aguero leaving and uh, that vacancy arising, like some people suggested it would be a bit of a gamble. I think the only gamble was that he'd had some fitness problems and whether he would be ready and available. And let's see if he can... Um, withstand the, the rigours of a Premier League season. So far, it uh, appears he can. You never know if that will change. But if City needed one thing to, in their eyes, hopefully make that step up to, say, winning the Champions League and dominating the Premier League even more, it's just an out-and-out goal scorer to finish off all of those chances. They uh, don't finish as many as they create. Uh, they're not bad, even without him. Um, but with him... Um, I don't see how they're going to be stopped if he's fit and available with Kevin De Bruyne behind, Bernardo Silva in the form of his life. Maybe a bit of weakness and injury problems defensively, but 
when you've got that going forward, you might be able to cover up that at the back. Well, that's it. David, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week on The Five Insider. Guys, make sure you like, share, comment and subscribe. Follow David on his socials. You know, uh, he's got great stuff that he does with The Athletic and it's absolutely brilliant. Everything is in the description. Get following. Follow me as well. I'm happy to say that I, I think it was the wrong decision to get rid of Tuchel. I think most... He connected with the Chelsea fans. He won trophies. He's in a difficult period, that's for sure. Do you know what I mean? But um, I, I think that getting rid of him, there's no good way to get rid of a manager. So I'm not really buying to like the, how it was handled. Like, for whatever decision, I think that was wrong.